Good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm delighted to welcome you to this morning's webinar, Take Your Social Media to the Next Level, brought to you as part of Armagh, Banbridge and Craig Avon Council's flagship business support programme, Transform Your Business. This programme is funded by Invest Northern Ireland and the European Regional Development Fund under the Investment for Job and Growth Northern Ireland programme. And we're delighted to have you with us today. My name is Claire McGee and I'll be your host for today's webinar. And along with Barney Toll, we are the co-founders of Innovate MI and we currently deliver the Transform Your Business programme on behalf of ABC Council. Um, it's great to see so many of our Transform Your Business participants joining us this morning. And for those of you joining for the first time, um, the Transform Your Business programme is a tailored suite of support um, that offers free mentoring to businesses across all sectors from innovation, early export, digital transformation and growth to specific support for young entrepreneurs and social enterprises as well. To be eligible for support, um, your business has to be based in the ABC borough, employ less than 50 employees and should not be an Invest MI client company. Um, so the Transform Your Business program is still open for applications, so I'd encourage anyone um, who's joined us for the first time today um, to directly apply via the Council's website. I'll also share the links as we're going through the webinar this morning. Um, and um, without further ado, I'm delighted to welcome Lynn Much of Middle Horse Media and a, also an Innovate MI mentor to lead us in today's webinar. Um, after six fantastic years traveling to some of the most breathtaking locations as part of her social media career um, at Chain Reaction Cycles, um, a, role, a role that has taught her so much about content creation and has given her the skills and insight um, which she uses to push her clients forward today. Um, so Lynn is going to take us on a whirlwind um, practical advice um, and practical tips on social media and to basically take you to the next level on creating content online. Um, so Lynn, I'd like to welcome you this morning and I'm going to pass pass the mic over to you. Um, guys, and as we're going along, please feel free to put, put um, any of your um, questions um, into the chat facility as we're moving forward and um, we'll deal with those as we're going along. So strap yourselves in um, and um, enjoy enjoy the session. Thanks so much, Claire. Thank you. Um, I am going to share my screen. Lovely stuff. OK, well, thank you so much for coming along. As Claire said, I'm Lynn, owner of Noodle Horse Media. And um, before I start telling you a little bit more about myself, the format for today is going to be as interactive as we can make it. So um, if you have the option to watch on a laptop today, that's great. Uh, it means that you can play with your phone and use a lot of the, um, the functions that I'm going to be talking about. Um, and also by today, like it would be a amazing if you've got the confidence uh, with some of the skills and the tips and tricks that I'm going to be giving you if you are up for posting your own content today make sure you tag me in it because I would love to give you some feedback and some positive encouragement I think it's going to be great so uh, yeah let's get cracking uh, I am all about progress not perfection and as I always say to people, posted is better than perfect when it comes to social media. We can definitely all get the social media fear. It is real, let me tell you, and overthink your content. Uh, especially if you start second guessing, oh, I hate the way I sound, I hate the way I look on that. Honestly, posted is better than perfect. And the more that you can get into the habit of having an idea, thinking about it, planning it out, then getting it made, getting it posted and moving on to the next thing, the better. So um, yeah, let's go through that today and, and see how it goes. So first of all, we're gonna kick off with a little about me video. Um, Here are four things you should know about Noodle Horse Media and you're gonna to wanna to write this down. I'm Lynn. I run the show and I've spent the last seven years up to my eyes in trends, analytics and the ever-changing landscape of social media. I decided to set up my own consultancy in September 2021 to help brands and companies get instant access to winning social media strategies that will entertain, inform and ultimately convert their followers into loyal customers. Social media has taken me around the world from California to Switzerland, bringing the best behind the scenes coverage to thousands of followers, but nothing beats the rush I feel now, coaching clients to show up online with confidence and a super slick message to tell. 
I'm incredibly passionate about empowering women in business and constantly provide tutorials and quick wins for free over on my Instagram channel. I'm talking directly to you. If you ever feel not good enough that talking to camera is mortifying or that social media is a young person's game, I'm here to be your biggest cheerleader. Let's work together and find the right tone of voice for you. Oh, so there we go. So uh, yes, I've had some great successes so far on um, this journey since going out on my own as a consultant. I've worked with big brands such as TGI Fridays um, who needed some help with their TikToks. I revitalized the um, approach that they were taking and we got their average views from 400 right up to 1.9 million on the, uh, the TikTok that we made on the coaching session on the day that I went over to London to work with them. So I was delighted with that. Um, you can see here in the uh, video or the picture beside the kind of Navy box, I work with a fantastic local uh, goldsmith week in, week out on one-to-one -one coaching sessions. And she's been delighted with the confidence that she feels on our social media. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoy what I'm doing and I love meeting all the new people uh, that I get to work with because um, that's the cool thing about all the businesses, especially in Northern Ireland. There's such a variety of different industries and you guys are so passionate about the products or services that you provide I want to help you get over the line with what I can do to uh, get that message out there on social media so let's have a little look shall we Instagram growth is hard and if you're not willing to dedicate your time to it, it's even harder to grow. Um, so really the, the kind of the main things that you're um, having to think about before you start stressing about why your Instagram growth or in general, your social media growth is stuck. Just ask yourself, how often are you actually showing up on social media? And I think we are all really guilty about forgetting that social media is social and we don't necessarily interact with other accounts as much as we should, but we do expect them to, um, you know, when we post something, we, we hope that they are going to immediately like and comment and share our posts, but it's definitely a two-way street. The second thing is peeking over your neighbor's digital fence and thinking, oh man, I wish I had what they had, whether it's the amount of followers they have or the confidence they have. But comparison is the thief of joy and no one knows your business like you do. So yeah, today with my help, I really want to get you guys into a good place where you're posting content, you're engaging with other creators, make sure you're replying to customers um, as well when they comment on your posts and your content's going to improve and you're going to have a better relationship with, um, with others. And both of those are essential for growth. Um, so without further ado, because uh, this is definitely one of the biggest questions I get asked, what to post about on Instagram. Here are six types of social media content that will drive the most engagement to your profile. And these are tried and tested by myself over the years, and they definitely have a place. Um, so don't worry, you don't have to do them all at once. Um, but there are things to look at and consider. And in the chat box, if you need any um ask any questions at all as I'm going along here so um from we've got entertainment inspiration education conversation connection and promotion so let's kick off with entertainment and that's in the way of keeping abreast of current events that are happening so when it's you know Grammys time Oscars time things that are in the news you'll always start to see on your social media memes that pop up of like and it, you know, within minutes of an event happening, things will pop up and you'll start to see them trending into people making them about their business. So it's just, it's been twisted from talking about the event itself to actually people can make memes about their business. And you have to just keep a little eye on it and think, yep, I could make that appropriate to what I'm doing. So definitely something to think about. Entertainment wise as well, we've got contests and giveaways now be warned I 
I'm definitely a big fan of contests and giveaways, but they play their part. And don't be tricked into thinking, oh, if I give away this, I'll maybe get loads of likes and followers on my account. And you have to sort of take a little step back and think about contests and giveaways more as a way to really thank your engaged community. So take a little time before you step into this area and establish like a really engaged community by doing some of the other things before then you run a big uh like a Facebook live giveaway or an Instagram live giveaway and um make the whole act of the prize giving give it the, the giveaway um so much content can come from that you can start with all your posts that you're describing about this event happening but then you could also have a facebook or an instagram live on the day to actually announce the winner so there's there's loads to be done with that sort of thing but i'm maybe getting ahead of myself let's move on to inspiration and um this is a really quick win one that you can do so for me, I would recommend you can take a really lovely picture, say you, um, your business premises are somewhere really picturesque. You could take a picture of outside of business and you could put a, a quote relating to your business over it. So um, for me, I just go on to Pinterest and I search for business quotes and there's always something that's going to resonate with people. Um, in this past week, I've had two different clients message me to say that they've created reels on Instagram that have literally just been a panning shot of them and a lovely garden or a meadow or something like that and they've put really nice music to the background of it and they've had more success with that than some of the ones that they've overthought and, and over processed so you can definitely have a, a lot of content made with quotes facts about your business is a really good one um personal stories of success and even personal stories of failure just so many things that you can uh, you can create content about. Education next, informative blog posts. So say each week you or each month maybe you write a newsletter or a blog that can be repurposed into content. So you can um, make a story for your Instagram about it. You can post it onto your Facebook. You can make it into the different types of Instagram posts, which will be in two slides time. I'll get to that soon. But just keep in mind that if you're working smarter and not harder, it's going to save you a little bit of time when it comes to social media creation and you'll get into the flow of it. Um, all right, conversational posts, questions. So say um, one of my favorite things to do is this or that. So say you owned a clothing company. For me, uh, that is an absolute quick win. When it comes to Instagram, you can make this or that posts using the grid function. I'll show you that soon. And so you could have... Um, you could think of things in batches. So you could look at all your yellow clothes, right? And say, right, today we're going to be looking at all things yellow for spring. I know, groundbreaking. But you could have a yellow dress uh, versus, with like green flowers on it versus a yellow dress with blue spots. And you could use that to say this or that and use the poll function and get people to vote on it. You do things like that that are questions, um, People are going to be engaging in that. It's such a quick win for you. That drives the engagement up and therefore Instagram perk up and their algorithm thinks like that. Definitely, we're going to push that out to more people. Um, filling in the blanks is a great one for both uh, Facebook and Instagram as well. If you've got uh, your followers on site, here's a really good one that has worked for years with me is um, what is this? Fill in the blanks. And if you have a tool of the trade, you could either um, take a really close up picture of it. So people have to guess what it is. So like it could be like the tip of a pen, but really close up or it could be a really obscure tool because um the goldsmiths that I work with she has a bunch of stuff that I have no idea what it is and to her they're just tools of the trade that she uses every day and she thinks well surely everybody knows that but that's one of my biggest takeaways that I hope you guys think today 
what is it that's special in the business that you do that you think, oh, actually not everybody knows what that is. I was speaking to somebody last night who owns a, a sheep farm and she just is so used to the humdrum of everyday life that she didn't even think that, you know, videos of her sheep eating or acting the, the goat and, you know, like messing around, that's comedy gold that would be perfect to make into a reel and to her that's just the humdrum of everyday life so um have a little think now about what's special that you maybe take for granted that everybody knows about but that actually they don't it's you because you're a specialist and they could be part of your guess the tool kind of stuff um connection building up a genuine connection this is what i'm really passionate about okay so I know um, there are specialists that are focusing on paid social, and I know it can be really tempting to um, just boost posts on Facebook and Instagram whenever they offer you, oh, you can do this for 10 pounds. However, I really think that um, building an organic community where you're actually caring about who is speaking to you and they care about you you can do that by showing them a little bit behind the scenes. So say, for instance, if you take a delivery, we'll set your phone up. We'll show you the tripods later. And you could do a time lapse of you unboxing some of the stuff. And then you could even like rip some of the packaging and be like, OK, here's a wee look, but I'll show you no more. I will show you it later. And it just builds up a bit of a sense of excitement and um, yeah, people just genuinely see the real you. It'll take practice for you to get to the point where it's, you know, the real you, which is mostly the business you. It's not your genuine, you're at home in your pajamas you, but it's still a connection and that's what really matters. Um, and yeah, finally, um, promotion, promoting yourself, which I think we are all very guilty of finding really hard to do, especially in Northern Ireland, we're a wee bit behind the door when it comes to promoting ourselves. But if you get any client testimonials, so say for instance, you get um, a Google review, you can just copy and paste that text. You could make a nice graphic up in Canva and that could be a wall post on Facebook or Instagram. It could be a story and you could have a little run of them. And people really like the genuine uh, feedback from other people. So it's not just you blowing your own horn. So there are some little tips about types of social media content that drives the most engagement to your profile. Let's keep cracking on. And I hope everybody is uh, enjoying this. OK, um, so. Having a well-optimized bio on Instagram gives prospective followers a heads up as to what they'll expect to see more of from you when or if they decide to follow you. Um, are you actually happy with the bio that's on your Instagram business page at the moment? Have a wee look at it, see what you think about it, because I've heard this fact that it's actually a decision time of between one and three seconds for somebody to decide whether they actually want to know whether they're going to follow you or not. So you got to hook them in before they scroll on. Come up with your own mission statement for your account and how you plan on serving your followers once they start following you. Why should somebody trust you? Do you have an award perhaps for your industry? Have a call to action, that's a CTA, in the final line of your bio that's going to direct your followers to the next steps. So should they sign up to your email list? Should they click on your most recent video or should they check out your website so have a look at your social media bio today and obviously you guys are going to have access to this video afterwards so you can go through it a little bit slower and see what way um, you would like to adjust that so next up what are the types of Instagram posts we can make? I have definitely told you about the content that you can make, but what types can you uh, can you do? So um, what do you need to know about Instagram, first of all? If we take it down to the base level, it's a perfect platform to build brand awareness. It's going to boost your visibility among potential service users or clients. Uh, 
Um, if people don't know your business exists, they can't use it. So again, I'm going to keep talking about a really engaged community. If you can cultivate an engaged community on Instagram, um, you are going to be onto a winner, as well as having access to all the analytics that are so valuable to see what topics your clients, your followers are engaged with most. Okay. Just again, I will reiterate. Um, just because other people have thousands of followers and things like that, stay in your own lane. You work on you because it's your business at the end of the day and nobody knows it better than you. So just don't get overwhelmed with thinking, oh God, I'm never going to get to the big numbers. Those big followers, that doesn't transfer um, to money in the bank, okay? A lot of people get that twisted. So um, just keep doing you, plodding along nice and slowly, but we're going to take it up a wee notch today for sure for you. So carousels. You'll see that carousels have the little uh, double square, and that means that you can swipe through on those. And they're great for storytelling and breaking up difficult com um, concepts over a number of slides. You can have up to 10 slides in a carousel, but do the bare minimum. If you only need three or four, then so be it. Also, really good tip. So say you were going to do it for your testimonials. I did that last week and it was really good. It really um, landed well and people liked it. So I can't remember how many testimonials I picked, but say, for instance, I did four. Right. Then I would have like um, uh, an opening page, a cover page. So that would take us up to five. And then a closing page at the end would be six. So have a maximum, the meat being like eight slides long and always have an opening slide that maybe has your face and what the carousel is going to be about. So it could be um, like how your package, like, oh, it could be that you like this. And then the text could be ever wondered how your package is delivered from us. And then it could be the process of how it happens. And then the end slide the call to action would be interested in finding out more you know and then check out whatever the call to action is that you want at the end um so yeah then moving on we've got singles so singles are the traditional what everybody thought of um in the old-fashioned instagram days of, of 10 years ago or more where people were just able to post single photos and that was it but Instagram have come out recently in the last month or two to say that they are moving away from photos and they're definitely moving on to a more video based platform. However, I do think that every so often, if there's something valuable that you think, um, oh, I'd like my viewers to see that and it's worth more than just a story, um, I'll put it on my main wall, then absolutely you do you. Now, also in saying that, um, retail, like visual space wise, the um, 1080 square is kind of out now. Interestingly, Instagram are trying to test doing it nine by 16, which is the same size as a reel. But at the minute, the um, four by five um, size of a um, like a portrait mode is what's showing up mostly on photos. So, um, yep, you can give that a whirl. Next up is stories, and they are great for so many things. So you can do behind the scenes events, uh, daily updates, uh, shout outs to different followers, um, interacting with your audience, and definitely what you should be using for over 50% of your stories is the interactive stickers. So that's your quizzes, your questions, your polls, more on that to come. Next up, you've got Reels, and uh, hopefully you've all heard of Reels. They're short form, addictive, trendy videos, and they keep pace with TikTok. And they can be way more than just dancing. Please, like, don't break your heart thinking, oh, my God, I need to learn how to dance. You don't. You really don't. Uh, educational posts work so well, uh, which is lucky for you guys, because I know that your businesses have a lot to tell.
And then finally, you can build up to going live and you can do um, Instagram or Facebook lives. On Instagram, you can also team up with another expert in your field. So I don't know if you've ever seen on your Instagram um, on the stories bubbles at the top, sometimes when people are live, that goes to the very front and it'll have the little word live underneath. You can see that in, in the little icon below my picture. You can also collaborate with another user. So it'll be two bubbles with both their images. That's an ace way to do things. So say you had, um, oh, say you were going to um, an event an exhibition center, um, you could do a live with the host of the, the exhibition and you could be saying about what is going to be at your um, exhibition stand, what people can expect. And you could even have some examples of some of the products on offer. You could show them and that would be a perfect little live to get people warmed up for what's to come. Uh, so that is the different posting styles on Instagram. And yeah, just try and use them. Um, there we go. A little realistic posting schedule. So, you know, I'm not going to say go from, you know, zero posts at the minute to posting three times a day. Not manageable. You just will end up being really hard on yourself if you feel. So a realistic posting schedule for most business owners. Um, it's best to sit down and evaluate how much content you can realistically create and schedule every month. And remember, as I said earlier, the trick is to work smarter and not harder. So if you always have um, like frequently asked questions that people are always asking you, make them into content. So you can make them into reels, stories, carousels, single posts, and then you can share those at different times of the month of the quarter going on. Just remember, a lot of people as well fall into this trap of thinking, well, I already posted about how I package up an order. I can't post about it again. You absolutely can. Because if you think, if you were to go on to one of your favorite Instagram profiles and look down the account and see, there'd be loads of different wall posts that you had completely missed from them, unless you're a super fan and you tune in every single day. We don't see 100% of the content on people's channels. So don't worry, you can absolutely talk about the same thing over and over again. Not that I'm saying that you should repost the same image each time, but what I'm saying is use it in the different types of posting styles and also mix up your message. And it's the same content, but just spoken in a different way. So yeah, that's a little bit of a realistic posting schedule. Have a little look and uh, and think what you um, what you, you could manage as a business owner. And if it still seems too much, just take it down a little notch. Um, but definitely focusing on posting nearly every day. Take Sundays off. Um, just to show up and be present and let people know that your account has a little bit of a heartbeat. And don't worry, if you're sitting at home thinking, well, what am I going to post about? I've, I've got plenty of ideas. And also, I'm going to want you guys to be um, dropping in some text with what your business is. And I'm going to try and come up with some off the top of my head, okay? So how to find inspiration. Creating content is split into two camps. You've got original content and you can copy trends. Use both for sure and don't think that copying is bad, but do think about the message that you want to convey. So your original content, Instagram again came out and said that they're going to be pushing more original content rather than trending signs. Um, so for original content, speak to the camera or if you're really not ready yet for the big, who's up you guys? Don't worry. <laughs> also, we'll get to that later that you shouldn't even say hi, get straight into the action. You can use the voiceover function. I have put tutorials later on in these slides that will show you how to, you could film a wonderful time lapse of you maybe packaging your product up. And then you can record a voiceover in Instagram and then you can post it as a reel and people are going to be blown away and be buying your product left, right and center. 
So that is educational, but it also hits up behind the scenes. As I said before, if you're um, if you've just taken a delivery, unbox some of that. If you're working, maybe you're an outdoors type of person. You're sort of in the steel industry. You could do lovely before and afters. There's some excellent transitions that we could learn that I can teach you and you can make some content from that. Live coverage from events. And when I say live, I mean off the moment. I don't mean you have to actually go live because I will say for the most part, uh, live events signal is always a little bit patchy. So it's best to kind of work within your means, but just be trying to post as much as you can from the event the the busyness of people about what your exhibition stand looks like things like that or maybe you're not even you haven't got an exhibition stand that's the great thing it doesn't always have to be flat out so specifically about your business but if you think that your clients would really engage with you know where you're at so maybe you're um a like you make cupcakes or something like that, but you go to like the ideal home exhibition. Is that even a thing anymore? Yeah, probably. And you could show, you know, things like, you know, if there was like beautiful kitchens there, setups and things that would look perfect. It kind of just find a little thread of a link to your business and you can go go for it in a big way. Now, on to trends. These can be really entertaining, but do not break your heart learning viral dance routines. Trust me, I know. <laughs> It'll take you hours and truthfully, it could be a complete flop. If there is an audio that's trending at the minute that you really love, so in the last couple of weeks, um, Lizzo's new song has been really trending. Um, the Louis Theroux audio um, with My Money Don't Jiggle Jiggle, It Folds. It was really popular a few weeks ago and it was everywhere. Yes, a lot of people doing viral dance trends to it, but a lot of people just using it as background music as well if they were just showing something from their business. So make it specific to your niche and uh, make it work for you. So, yep, which is better? As I said, Instagram came out and said they're going to start favoring original content, but there's definitely still merit to using the trending signs, especially at the minute if they are under seven seconds. I've had people text me this week that have tried to make some reels for the first time and found that they were maybe doing them right up to sort of 30 seconds. And I'll be really honest with you guys, at the start, your audience just aren't quite ready for it yet and they're not fully invested in your content creation style so you can just take it down a wee notch to seven seconds and that will absolutely keep their attention because this is the thing um on tiktok definitely they have an algorithm that if you have a less than 15 second tiktok uh tiktok want the viewers to watch 100% of that. And then that kind of checks a box that they will get it further and further out. They'll spread it to more people. And as you make a longer video, it they, they reduce it to 75%. And if you make a 90 second video, if people watch 50% of it, then they will still spread it out. But if it's less than 15 seconds, they want the users to watch 100% of it. And that's how it gets pushed out by the algorithm. So it's something that definitely transfers over to Instagram as well. And that's where practice and practice will make your um, video creation much snappier when you're making reels. Um, I hope you uh, understand what I mean there. Maths, it's not my strong point, but yeah, <laughs> basically percentage watched, you want 100% of people watching all of your videos. So on to where to find your inspiration for reels. First of all, on Instagram, you can look on the Discover page. So on the photo on the right, you can see I've circled the um, magnifying glass at the bottom. And this is going to be really specific to you. You are going to see different things. I can see there I've got a lot of greyhound pictures. <laughs> um, so you can um, have a little look on there. 
And you can also look on TikTok. If you use TikTok, there is so much happening there. And it's usually about two weeks ahead of Instagram in terms of what's trending. So search for terms relating to your business and see what other content creators are doing. And you can absolutely make it about yourself. Um, and where is the discovery page? Yes, I have shown you that already. Still stuck for inspiration. What is in your brain? Have a think about what the pain points are that your customers usually have. Do you have a solution? Each time you do, that is a new bit of content for you. So for me, uh, a customer pain point would be, I don't have the confidence to show up on social media. So I would start um, you know, writing things down on my notebook and then create a video based on tips that will make people seem more co confident on video or an alternative like doing a voiceover until you get the confidence. Uh, number two, frequently asked questions. I mentioned that already. Are customers always asking the same things? Excellent. Each new question is a new piece of content that in turn has the potential to be a new story, a poll, a reel, a carousel. You've got the whole lot there. So your media planner is going to be full to the brim with content. Um, so all of these ideas are a great way to make content pull. Soon enough, the only issue you'll have is finding time to film it all. Next up, before you film your next bit of content, why don't you try doing a storyboard? All you have to do is write out some of your points that you're going to talk about, where you're going to film it, and what props you might need. Doing it this way is going to save you a bunch of time. You're going to be far more organized and you should slide through it really easy. Good luck. Well, there you go. My little talking notebook there. Uh, filming or writing storyboards down before you um, start filming. Oh my goodness. So good because you will end up getting completely overwhelmed and thinking, what am I even meant to be saying? I am such a big t like fan of storyboards without a doubt, do it every single time. So you want um, your points to discuss on the left hand side. I've laid it down as to what your um, your video should look like within the first one to three seconds. You want a hook to grab them in. So you could be like, here are three things you didn't know about insert business name. And then you go through your main points and then you finish with a question or a call to action. So say you were showing um, your cupcakes off or whatever, which one looked the tastiest to you? Let us know. Something like that. Then you can type, uh, you can write down what your filming locations are, switching up your locations. So even if it's the same room, there's a bunch of different places or, um, you know, angles, camera angles that you can use um, that will keep your viewers far more interested instead of being like, here are three things to know about me. Uh, so first off, I really like ice cream. And secondly, um, I'm, I need to tidy, <laughs> you know, you want to make it fast and engaging. So you would have like the first one being like, I'm a big fan of ice cream. And then second, you would change camera angle again and have all your washing that you needed to fold. Uh, so this way, it's moving super fast. You're getting all your video done in less than 10 seconds, if we can. I know that freaks people out all the time, but honestly, it just, it makes it so much snappier at the start. And I will get, I think I mentioned it later, but basically take out on when you're recording a reel, okay, you can go and edit the clips and there's a little white handle at the bottom that you can scrub along that will trim off the first second or so. Because sometimes when you're recording, you take a wee minute for your brain to see that recording has started. And then you say, here's what you missed last week. There's that space, get rid of it, trim it away. You just, you want to be, at the, the the point of speaking and that's when your time to shine is so that'll save you seconds as well but it'll make the whole thing look a whole lot slicker all right let's go and here is my storyboard example so three things you didn't know about insert your business name but you'll be buzzing to know oh look at that for a little follow-up hook 
So you could film that at your desk uh, with your laptop. That In my storyboard example, this is what I thought. So step one, I love my clients. And this is where you can use your um, pre-recorded videos that I know that you're all creating whenever you're out and about working. You're like, oh, that would be perfect content. So this is taking that from being uh, just constantly sitting in your phone's photo album to actually being used because flat out, I bet you we all have camera rolls that are full of photos and videos of our stuff and we're never going to use it. So let's think about creative ways that we can use this. Um, next up then, oh yes, yeah, so then in my head, that would be a montage of my client clips and a voiceover. I'll get to how you do that later. And here I am working with this client on a project about that. Um, next scene would be who is Noodle Horse? And uh, I would explain why I came up with the name. And then when I'm not working, I'm usually riding my bike and that would be another clip. And then it would finish off again with me back to camera over to you let me know some things about you that what did I put tell me some things you don't think the world knows about you and then we would go so considerations audio and duration um when you're scrolling through reels and you see music that you like you just need to click on the three dots and then you can save it and it'll be in your saved folder then you go down to the bottom of Reels. If you guys are playing with your phones at the minute, open it up and go into Reels and press the middle button here, okay? And that's Reels. And then you can start scrolling through all the audios. So you can see that this one at the bottom is trending because it has a little arrow. I'm not saying that you always need to use trending signs at all, uh, but you can press on that audio and you can press use audio and from there you're ready to film and get your camera out Ooh, and you can do all of this um, and you can hear the music going on in the background and that helps you with the timings of things um the yeah sorry the other way i was going to show you if you wanted to save that audio don't do it this way where you press um, save audio because I always think um, I'll forget what the point of the video was that I was going to make it about so press as I said those three dots there if you can see that and uh, and just press save and then that'll go into your saved folder so when you go to your home screen and you press the little um, three lines the burger at the top you can go down to saved it should be under QR code and you can go in there and you can see all the videos that you've ever saved. So that's a little extra tip for you. Um, next up is cover image for Reels. Should you make a cover image? I say yes. Don't stress about it, though, because it can be very easy to do. Um, I always make my reel and then I just get ready to post. I'm like, oh, cover image. So I either nip over to Canva and make it in there or you can save your reel as a um as a draft and then go into stories and get a photograph of yourself and then write some text over it that explains um look at your storyboard again and like your opening line three things you didn't know about noodle horse media and i would just make that as a story and then you don't post it just save it down and that'll be in your camera roll then go back to drafts in your rails and open it up so you just go to the top right corner and on instagram and you press the plus button here and then you go to rail and then you go to the bottom where your um your photos are and then uh, it'll say recents and then it'll also say drafts and you can pick your draft video from there. Um, and then you can add your cover image. Then think about time to post captions and keywords. So ask yourselves right now, how often do you read long captions? Do you read them all? I don't always. And if you have something that you think, oh man, 
this, I need to explain this in a detailed way. That's when you have to think, okay, write it all down in your notes app on your phone, because that's going to be perfect content to split between six lovely carousel slides. And you're going to make that into a separate bit of content. So maybe try and keep your captions short and sweet on this reel, but don't rule out long captions completely. Sometimes it's just all about testing to see what your um your followers will resonate with most so just keep testing and keep trying no point in just posting and then be like well that was an absolute flop and i will not be back on rails for 10 more years because that's just not going to help you when it comes to growing your business and it's your business at the end of the day and you want to shout your worth and people will want to see it the right people will want to see it which leads me on to my next point. Sometimes the worst reel you make will perform the best and the one that you think is going to be amazing will be your worst, but do not delete them because some that get sort of low average views at the start will have a wee burst a few weeks later, which is a nice little treat. Um, so like, for instance, that top one there, can we skip to the good part? I was like, this is going to be amazing. I'm using a trend in sound. I was using a really fancy transition and I um, I had like, like a hooky caption and it had loads of really good like ideas in the caption below that. I absolutely flopped, 207 accounts reach. And I was like, wow, there we go. Um, however, this one on the right, um was just uh yeah again a bit of a trend in sound and then I was walking through Sainsbury's car park and I was carrying the messages in one hand and my phone in the other and I just filmed it partly in my car and partly after I got the shopping and it got like 37 38,000 plays what is that all about and it's nonsense but people liked it because it was about I think what was the audio like I don't know about you but I'm my content is enjoyed by well over four people worldwide which is so funny because I guess that's why it worked because it's self-deprecating and uh I put in the caption you four people keep me going and so even though I had like hundreds more followers than that four people obviously felt special but lots of people liked it and and saved it and which is strange yeah, people save that I'm not sure why but it's a great metric to have you want people to be saving your content because that highlights to Instagram that they think that it's valuable so posted is better than perfect again every day of the week you're not in control of what goes viral and what doesn't and just stop overwhelming yourself with expectations um don't freak out as well if somebody has done what you want to do, just recreate it in your own way, relating to your niche, even if it has been done before. Um, and consistency wins. If your post doesn't go viral, don't hide in the cave of shame. Uh, take it as a positive. You're working out what your customers like and dislike. So just keep going. Which leads me on to, I'm losing followers, help. I always congratulate people on this and they always look at me so weirdly. Get rid of the dead weight. Get rid of the nosy people who you used to know before you set up your businesses and get rid of the follow unfollow people. That's the two type of people that you just do not need on your followers list anymore. OK, so see those people that um, follow your account and then you follow them back and then a couple of days later they unfollow you but you don't notice and they get your follower. They can get in the actual bin. Don't worry about it. You don't want either of those people, the nosy nebs or these follow on follow fools, because neither of them are going to be your ideal customers. OK, if you see those numbers going down, just focus on the people that engage with you on the day to day who love the business that you're doing and think that you're great. OK, and keep making content for them, not those other agents. Uh, buying fake followers. 
absolutely do not do it. And the easy way to find out if somebody has bought fake follow profile likes rather than just taking their time to build up genuine engaging content is to look at the number of people who follow them versus the number of likes and comments that they get on a post. So I've got about 600 at present followers, but um, I really have a healthy number in comparison to that of people who like my posts and engage with them. And remember, as I said earlier, followers do not equal money in the bank. It's so, so hard not to get hung up on these vanity metrics. Um, but especially when you look at other accounts in your industry who are doing amazingly, but just serve your followers and take some joy in doing it. That's what social media is all about, building the community and having a wee bit of fun while you're doing it. And if you see it as just something you know that you need to do, it's just so grim altogether when you're not enjoying it. So find what works best for you and, and try and make content around that. Um, so quick tip number one, are your story views dropping? Use polls or interactive stickers in about 50% of your stories, especially the first story of the day. I'm so pleased to report back that the people that I have recommended this to, they have definitely seen much better engagement. So for instance, that was me at the hairdressers. I use the little slider um, function and then put emojis below and then people can slide to it. So for instance, you could be at, say you're at the Balmoral Fair, um, what should we go and see first? And then you could put a tractor emoji, um, a hot dog, because you might go to the food stand first or um, or the like a cow emoji. And that way people can vote. So it's just a simple little fun thing that um, people take a bit of enjoyment in. Next up, um, you can upload a poll to Insta stories. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the this or that. I'd love to know in the um, comment section, who has the old version of polls as seen in this picture and who has the new version on your Instagram stories. It's a black box with, um, you can add up to four options um, or you can add a question mark if you don't know the answer. That is absolutely fine as well. Um, I still have the old version of polls. It, on my um, Noodle Horse Media Instagram. It doesn't have it on my, it has the new version on my personal account. I'm not sure why I'm still behind the times, but sure we persevere. But if you look at the um, third picture along and go to the, um, sorry, if you, on the left-hand side, when you open up stories, um, I have the new version with four options. I have the new version, but last week it went back to the old version. Yes, and they've changed their colors. Yes, Julia, they um, they changed their colors last week and everything's much more intense and vibrant to keep us on there for longer. <laughs> um, yeah, when you open stories though, on the left-hand side, there's a bit to change the grid. Now for the fancy ones among us that have the four options, you could keep it with four pictures. Lucky you guys. But for us old fashioned guys, we're going to have to change it to two pictures because we've only got a this or that option. Change it to two pictures on the second uh, slide along. And then at the bottom left where your images are, that's where you go into your phone and find a bunch of your product photos that I know we all have. And you can upload one and then upload the other. Then in the third one, you see the square with the smiley face. Pop your poll there. Just title it this or that. And then put a little box, uh, an arrow pointing up or down. If you do a run of these, the engagement is going to be off the chart. In my old place, uh, sometimes we would get average views uh, back in the day of maybe about 7,000 story views. On days that I did interactive polls, it would bounce up to 18,000. So it definitely works. And Instagram are, um, are like people in the in this sort of creative space are saying, if you can do over 50% of your stories with some sort of um, engagement thing like that, you're on to a winner. So if we crack on here, this is something that you can make in Canva, which 
could then run for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be seven stories long. So that would be a travel edition where you have the same image in the background, but you upload it as a new story each time and work your way down the categories, changing the poll stickers each time. So the first one is um, you would just have it blank and then you could put a text box over to say, want to play a game? Um, what are your, like, let's play this or that travel edition. And then you upload the photo again and you add the poll out of my country, in my country, and then people can vote between the two and you keep going on. Go with a group or solo, take a train, take a plane, and people will just flick through. So sometimes I do it about, um, you know, breakfast choices or sweet and savoury. Sometimes I do it to help me. Um, so last week I was going to an awards dinner and I wanted people to help me pick out which dress I should wear, which was really good or hair up and hair down. So it, again, that is ticking the box of showing behind the scenes and a little bit of my personality. Um, right, text placement on Reels. That's the dress I went with, by the way, last week. Be really mindful of where you place your text bubbles because you don't want them too low or they'll get hidden behind your caption and you don't want them too high as they get cut off by the Instagram text at the top and you don't want them out of the left and the right boundary. So if you can see on that picture, the blue line in the middle is the center point and then you can see the no-go zones on the all around it. So don't put your text outside of those. When you uh, click on your text bubble that you've, you've uh, written, you can just drag it about and then it'll hit, the lines will appear for you. Um, and also when filming a reel or story, leave enough space above your head to add some text. So I've started actually, um, my setup here is, this is my laptop. And so if I'm going to film something, I sometimes have started just setting my phone against my screen, just probably shouldn't do that, but using the hands-free function. So it's down there and I'm a little bit back. And so then I know that above my head, there's going to be plenty of space that I can put some of my text because otherwise if I'm doing it as a selfie, I, I might be like taking up the whole screen, which is good sometimes. Sometimes I'll do that to prove a point, but mix it up with like a little bit of uh, blank space above you as well. Oh. Right. Hands up. Who's shy? You can put some me in the comments there. Um, if we use some of your many business photos, add text and use the text to voice function to add a voiceover. That means you don't have to show your face. You don't have to uh, let people hear your voice completely anonymous, but you're still on the road to doing your first bit of content creation. So over on Instagram, press the plus button again and go to reel. Then click the blue plus to add pictures from your camera roll and select your photos. Then this is a really important one. Make sure you scale your photos. Again, the Instagram algorithm, if they see those black bars at the top, so if you look at that, that is a landscape photo. And those black bars at the top, Instagram don't like it. They want it like that third picture, which is lovely full screen because they want their viewer to be completely immersed in the app at all times. So always try and use it full screen. Uh, scale your photos up and if you can have like so say for instance you are making your product and you're taking some photos off it when you've just finished it take some in portrait take some in landscape and that way you can have them for both instances so say you're posting to Facebook you might like it more landscape or um, Instagram you've got it in the portrait mode so add more images in the same way as before. Then using the, the text button in the top right that I've circled, add some text. What a beautiful morning for a hike in Belfast. 
Then at the bottom, so not the A's at the top, at the bottom where it's the sort of shadowed out, you can see the first couple of letters of what a beautiful morning. Click on that, all right? And then three little dots will come up and that you can click text to speech. And then it'll be a robot voice and you can check either the first voice one is a woman's voice or voice two is a man's voice. And it'll be like, what a beautiful morning for a hike in Belfast in more of a robotic way. But still, it's um, perfect because then um, you can type your message and it'll say it in, in the text to speak function. And you are happy as Larry. In behind your veil of anonymity for now mm, we'll get you out there so if you have more than one or two messages so for instance after the what a beautiful morning for a hike in Belfast I've put I love it here but the computer isn't smart enough and it will um just read those out at both so the audios will go over um both of each other the audios will play at once, Linny. Come on now. So click on the text that you want to use in the bottom right. And then click on the white handle. This is the one I was telling you about earlier. So I've picked the I love it here because I want it to come second. And you can see where I've selected the second sentence. I love it here to begin when the new photo appears. So you've got the cliffs, first of all, and then you've got the sunrise. So drag it along your timeline at the bottom there for when it appears. And then when the picture changes, the text will change as well. So that is a little tip for you. If you're a little bit shy and you don't want to show your voice and your face just yet. Now, how to set up your phone and tripod to record a time lapse. So I um, have like a bunch of different kit that I'll talk you through in a minute. But if you have one of these, we... Um, tripods this one came from B&M or something I think it was about 19 quid and it's USB but we all have um, plenty of USB plugs kicking about the house from old phones um, and or you can stick it into your computer uh, it has a little um, phone holder here and then this all lights up and it's it's adjustable much higher than this so you can set yourself up nicely lit and record a time lapse of yourself and time lapses are great as I was saying earlier if you're doing something that takes ages also a point to note when you're doing time lapses you don't have to go really quickly I was filming with a client a couple of weeks ago and I set the time lapse up and she felt like she had to like push this trolley really quickly and move fast the camera does everything for you don't worry you don't have to move fast if anything move slower and it will just take you like it'll go really fast so you'll be absolutely spot on camera wise though here is what i'm saying with regards to how you should set up your time lapse so do not use the front facing camera because it is lower quality i know you want to see yourself doing it but trust me you want a higher resolution and don't film it in landscape if you're going to make it into a reel okay so uh don't have it this way uh no okay instead use it this way so you take your camera and use your rear facing camera and then have it in portrait. And you're saying, but Lynn, how am I gonna know how it looks? That is where you either have to use something like, I have an Apple watch and it has um, an automatic camera remote on it, which is excellent. Um, and you can see from the camera remote what the display on the camera is showing, amazing. Or you can just set your camera up and, press record on the time lapse and do a test shot and then come back and check it. Or uh, you can use a mirror behind you, behind the display of the camera, and you can look over and see like, yeah, I'm in the right position and then lean up and press start and then get on with your time lapse, your unboxing, your products, your making a floral wreath, your icing, a cake and packaging it up. 
go for it. Uh, or you can just get maybe if you have a helpful person um, nearby that can help you. But I know what it's like. A lot of you are just running the show solo at the minute. So I get it. Definitely. Um, it's just it's handy to know these types of things. All right, moving on. So you've got your time lapse and here's how to add your actual voice as a voiceover on Instagram. Again, go to Rails and click in the bottom corner here and upload your time lapses that you've created. Um, then once you've selected the videos that you want to use, if you look at the top um, bar, you can see how much of the time um of the time lapses these have taken up so don't make it too long at the start as i said people want short and snappy you can click preview to watch them all stitch together instagram will have done that for you then you can also hit the um, edit clips button if you want to just trim them down slightly uh you might have the bit at the start where you press and record don't need it get rid of it um, so once you're happy with that, click back to, um, as you can see here, where the um, musical note is, and you can add a voiceover there at the bottom on the third picture uh, in the middle. You can add your own voiceover, which is amazing. So uh, we can see here it's time to record yourself explaining what you're doing in the video. You have to press and hold for it to continue recording. So if you can see in the second picture, the red bars, that was uh, the first bit was me pressing. And then when I released it, it kept the video kept playing on behind it. So then you can have a wee bit of silence in your video and then press again and record a little bit more. And the next thing I did this and then I did that and then let go. But I messed up that one. So I don't like it and I want to delete the second clip I made. So you just press the back button there um, that is circled in the second clip. Um, so uh, once you're done, you've you've recorded your voiceover. Excellent. Add your caption and a hook that will get people in along with some hashtags relevant to your business and also look at this third picture. Also share to feed. So make sure that you um, click that because it means that it'll go onto your main feed rather than just your Reels feed. So that's a good one. Uh, again, as I said, you can change your cover picture as well. In that third picture, if you hit cover, you can move it along and pick something that you have saved with some nice text in it. So like, for instance, this one could be how to clean your jewelry at home because um, that's what that middle picture is. Right, moving along, steaming along nicely, guys. Uh, hopefully this is all uh, useful to you. How to add voiceovers to Reels. Um, so first of all, you're going to have to start with um, your storyboard for what the audio will be. Trust me, sometimes I try and wing it and I have to re-record re it like three times because I forget what's happening in the video. So when you've got all your videos stitched together on that reel just press preview and see it and be like right we're doing this okay and then this happens and then this happens all right so some don'ts before we begin you don't have to say hi you don't have to say hi i'm lynn i'm here to talk to you about carpet fitting this is a case study on a carpet fitting business get straight into the action okay so um the video starts playing and you start recording so today we're fitting whatever type of carpet it is onto stairs at our client's home in Bangor. The carpet is, and then explain some features such as its suitability for hard wearing areas. As you can see, I'm starting out by ripping up the old carpet to make way for the new one. And then I could like take my finger off the record button. If there's like a little bit of extra, you know, um, movement on the video, and then you can go back in and record again. Next up, I'm fitting the gripper rods over the top of my underlay. I don't know whether that's the wrong way around. I'm not a carpet fitter. Make sure to watch out for creases. This area will have a lot of footfall, so I've ensured everything is locked down well. Uh, new scene. Um, so this is one of my favorite parts. I'm using the knee kicker to make sure the finish on this installation is top notch. And then do you want to see the finished staircase? Give this video a like and I'll post it. 
So you finish there with a call to action for your viewers who have made it to the end of the video to be like, I do want to see the before and after. I'll give this a like and hopefully Lynn, the carpet fitter, will post it because she's put the underlay on correctly. <laughs> I do not know. Next up, what the font? Which fonts to use on stories and reels? Um, so use an easy to read font that isn't obscured by objects in the background. I was talking about that. Um, and it's such a great way to keep the viewer's attention. Bonus tip, Instagram's algorithm scans the text that you've written on your reels and your stories looking for keywords. It's a bit like their own version of SEO still relatively new, but make sure the text mentions things that are relevant to your business. Definitely this works. It's something that I have been doing recently, mentioning, um, you know, key points from the video that I know, uh, say somebody that was searching about social media help would be looking for. And those videos that I've done that have got a lot more reach. Um, so the top three ones at the uh, on this text, they're really easy to read, pretty universal. And the next one, it's very attention grabbing. Uh, these fonts are fine, but can be a little hard to read the kind of um, typewriter style ones. And then the ones at the bottom, nah, it's so hard to read, which is annoying because that first one, the swirly one would be great if you've got, you know, a beauty salon and things like that. It's very gentle, very soft, whereas the other ones are a bit, ugh, but it's terrible to read. So just give it a wide berth, you know. Um, so uh, here are the bits of kit that I use in my posting. I have um, I have some of them beside me. So I've got the um, the ring light that was about yeah twenty pounds as I said. I have this which is my favorite tripod. So you can see me using that there with Robinson Goldsmiths. It's a Manfrotto one. On Amazon, it's actually a little bit more expensive, but on Curry's, they had it at a really good price. I think it was £38. So you can see the head on it has this roller and you use that to adjust it and you can lock it in that way. And then um, it obviously the height really adjusts wide. Now, the only problem with this is that it doesn't actually come with something to hold your phone. It only comes with this little button, right? That um, how you put it in is you unlock it like that and you do that, right? But if you have a handheld tripod, like the one that uh, I'm on the train and I'm using there, that is really useful. I think that was about 15 pounds off Amazon. And if you search for handheld mobile phone rig, oh yeah, you can see I'm holding it at the bottom of that picture on the left as well. Um, it's really handy for keeping a steady hand. And it also has the threading for this little um, button. So I use a quad lock, which um, is from the quad lock website and I attach it to the button. And then that means my phone case is a quad lock phone case. And whenever I want to attach my phone to, I just have to do this and it's like that. Or if I'm filming stuff for Facebook, I can have it in landscape and we can go from there. I um, I see that uh, somebody has mentioned about tips for posting on Facebook. I would definitely say a lot of the stuff that I've talked about today from, especially from the first slide, um, is definitely applicable to post over to Facebook, um, you know, with regards to the likes of memes, behind the scenes stuff, and um, a little bit more about what you do on the day to day and your customers pain points, they can all be made into content on Facebook. And the good thing is as well, if you want to, um, oh, there we go. If you want to film in landscape, but you want the functionality of the rails, um, you know, interface where you can trim clips and stuff like that, you can actually just film it in landscape and then 
save it down onto your phone. And then that's perfect. You've got a landscape video that's ready to post onto Facebook. So that's a little tip for you. Um, I know there's obviously other third party apps or on iPhones, you've got iMovie that you can use to trim videos and get them looking a little bit sharper, but that's something that you can um, you can have a little think about. Um, so before you post, here are some checklists of questions that you should be thinking about. Why would our audience care? Would I have something to say if I saw this post in my feed? Am I giving my audience something to respond to? Uh, would my ideal audience find this interesting? And does this caption reflect my brand? If if they're all yes, then you're good to go. So whenever I'm saying, am I giving my audience something to respond to? That's your call to action. So, you know, does this post resonate with you? Um, hit like if you agree. Um, has this ever happened to you? You know, maybe if something funny has happened where you've spilt something all over your shoe that wouldn't be funny that would be a mess and it would be annoying but something frustrating like that that if um people can resonate with it then ask them be direct you you have to spoon feed them because you you want the best thing and you can't just assume that they're going to know what you want them to do with your content so uh share this to a friend who it might help um, start thinking like a content creator and then add it to your media planner. Your media planner doesn't have to be really professional. It can just be an Excel spreadsheet where you have um, what platform you want to post it on. Um, so like Facebook or Instagram story, you know, break it down into Reels, stories, post or carousel. And, and you don't even have to fill in content for each of them but as we said earlier working smarter not harder you can absolutely fill that up so um choose photos and create designs using maybe professional pictures that you've had taken but on the go mobile bangers as well they're definitely so much of a genuine feeling whenever it's your own photos don't be hard on yourself take those photos and videos and just keep trying that handheld rig if you've got a, sh a shaky hand will absolutely help you steady things a lot more uh just to go back to that i think the brand name is like Ulanzi, U-L-A-N-Z-I, if you want to search for it on Amazon, but there's there's loads. I think at the time I bought it was about 15 quid. Maybe it's gone up to like 17 or something. But yeah, it's definitely one to have with you that you can clip your phone into. I would be, um, be wary though, if you've got a big phone, like I've got an iPhone 12 Pro Max, those little brackets that hold on to cameras or onto phones now they can only stretch so far and with my case on that never feels completely tight so I have to take my case off and on each time so that's just a little side note for you um write effective copy so again we were talking about caption length play about with it but feature a call to action and again in the testing zone some posts put your call to action at the start has this ever happened to you or double tap if this has ever happened to you or you could say like a perfect day in the studio today we've been setting up to work with clients on how to paint this picture and then um invite people to leave their tips you know have you got a special birthday coming up that you'd like to come to our studio and do this you know um uploading content don't set unrealistic goals so if you're posting zero you can't jump to posting three times a day it's just not going to be sustainable so challenge yourself to up the numbers i really believe that you've got this and make sure you connect with your followers engage comment on their comments and start leaving comments on other pages that you follow but not just for the sake of it be engaging as possible so i always find if say some of the bigger creators have um posted 
if if you can get in early and give something really insightful if they're posting about um how to I don't know, do something, you can give your opinion like, oh, I've really found this week, I've been using a lot of yellow paint in my paintings. It's just making me face so spring-like. Um, you know, just a meaningful con concept rather than, oh, I love this post. That's not going to cut it. So try and think of, of how best to get your voice out there. And definitely choose some testimonials. So continue to use um, feedback to review and post about the services you offer. Um, right. Successful companies are consistent. Nail down a schedule, create a media planner, and set. if you work with a bunch of people, you can set up a group drive like on Google. So say one person was out on a job fitting something, they could then upload images or videos they've gathered that day and answer questions as close to immediately as you can and let your social media feel like it has a pulse. So if somebody has asked, oh, do these cupcakes come in boxes of nine? You can be like, no, 12 or six <laughs> um, and interact with your followers again. Make social media social. Your services are incredible and let's get the public appreciating the work that you do. So um, and on that, what I thought would make me productive uh, was just hard work, but don't feel overwhelmed by your social media. Don't leave here today thinking that you're going to go from posting once a month to posting three times a day. It just doesn't work that way, even for me. And this is my job full time. Just go easy on yourself, but hold yourself accountable to um, your, your goal is to improve the, your social media space, but take time for yourself and remember that there's always an opportunity to create content when you're out and about and doing things on the right hand of the screen, apart from sleep, don't, don't record yourself sleeping. You can always make content doing the other stuff. Just Make it sociable on your social media channels again. Engage with your customers and you will have a good old time. But yeah, that's it from me today. And I can't wait to hear now from you guys. If you've got any questions or throw some of your businesses into the comments, I'll be able to see them. And in the sort of five or so minutes that we've got left, I'll off the top of my head come up with a content idea for you. So let me know. Thanks. Brilliant one, thank you. Um, and welcome. guys get posted into the comments so, so we can avail um, of Lynn's expertise while we have her online. Um, <laughs> and we talked as well, we want to throw out a challenge, don't we, to the Transform Your Business participants who are joining us online today. So you have been working um, with your mentors on transform your business. Mm -hmm. You've also, um, you're also trying to market and, and sell um, your products and services online and, and to reach more customers. So following today's session, our challenge for you is take on the, the hints and tips that Lynn has provided. Make a video, um, it doesn't need to be fully edited, and send it in to us, and we will then work with you. We will work on it and do some edits of it, send it back. So you will have a piece of content that you can use online, and then we will also use it as kind of a showcase and use it through all our social media channels as a, a showcase of the Transform Your Business program. So that's the challenge we're setting you today. Um, you have all our social media handles. You also have our email address, which is transform at innovate-ni.com. Um, I'll put all the details into the, the chat and I will also, um, you will also get the watch again links. And um, so you'll be able to um, perfect, perfect all the learning that you've learned today. Um, so then there is a question um, on the chat there from Shawnee. Sometimes I want to comment on someone's social media post as the business, but I wonder if there's a time that it's awkward for a business to comment or reply to someone's story. 
Yeah, I would say use your own discretion, but for the most part, it's absolutely fine. Um, if it's to wish them congratulations on something like that, um, then absolutely go for it in a big way. Um, I, um, I just think, again, it's getting that point across that you are a person and not just this faceless corporate machine of a business. So, yeah. Uh, I see no problem in that. Um, I'm seeing another, um, what type of content for fire and flood restoration? Oh, this is such an exciting one. Oh my goodness. So before and afters are going to be your friend. Okay. So if you get your phone and you start the filming, so say this is the door frame here. Um, you just start your recording here and swoop in and then swoop out. Okay. And then do your, all your fixing up and things like that and then you can record again swooping in and swooping out and when you trim those together then it'll like create the the seamless where it looks like you've done this and it's been fixed magically so that's definitely one for you um also another one for that you could be holding it like that and you've surveyed the area, all the carpets, all water damage, and you're picking it up and it's grim all together. And then you finish with your hand up and then you fix the place. And when you start again, start with your hand here and reveal and it's all clean. Amazing. So that's definitely one to do. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I've been using an app called Preview to schedule posts for Instagram, but it only allows for single pics and carousels. Is there a good scheduling app that allows reels or even stories scheduling, preferably free? Julia, go to the back end of the Meta Business Hub, um, which is Facebook Business Suite, it used to be called. And you can see a lot more functionality when you link up your Facebook and your Instagram there. However, I would also say, I, I totally know that you have to schedule sometimes. Try and do it where you could still keep using your preview app to schedule the likes of the single posts and your um, carousels for like, you know, you could do it for twice a week. You could have those kind of using the um, the ideas I gave at the start. So the what is this or um, like, do you have a question? Those kind of posts. You could do a batch content of those and schedule those up for the next few weeks. But then use the real life posting Instagram and Facebook prefer that if it's coming out live as you intended it they will push it further if you for the likes of your um your stories for your reels you can make them all in one day and save them down as drafts and then whenever you have a spare 10 minutes think oh I've got that in my drafts ready to go post your captions already written your uh, cover stories on it then you're good to go in that so that's how I would break it down um, and how best would you introduce yourself to social media first post on a channel great question so here is my ideas I would batch a bunch of say six posts so many people say if they're starting from uh, scratch again this is how they would do it and they would post it all up in the one day because then any potential new followers because there'll be such an influx at the start have bits and bobs to actually read about who you are services you offer so for your um your introduction one I guess it could be like um hey I'm Kirsten this is my business name and here are some of the services we offer one and two and three I'm going to be posting so much more behind the scenes in the coming weeks so please make sure you follow and keep a lookout for more coming and then that could be your video uh, but then you've got the actual nitty-gritty details that can be the mix of the carousels the single posts and some videos as the other five posts that you have popped up there yeah um, my target market is for children writing children's books. However, my buyer is the parent and audience on social media. Oh, excellent. How exciting. Now, you are writing children's books. I would love to see um, your thought process into like how that come, like 
you know, where you get your ideas from. So I also see a lot of this on TikTok when people, TikTok would be the place for you to go and explore people that tell me about books. So, but they, they make, I fall for the video every single time where they tell you this outlandish story and you're like, oh, that's never happened to her. But actually then they're like, if you like the sound of that, make sure you read blah, blah, blah. And you could do that for your kid's book. If you've ever thought about uh, how it feels to be constantly losing all your, you know, like, I, I'm not actually sure what your books are about. <laughs> I am not a writer, but you are. I bet you could create some amazing sort of narrative that you make the person think that you're explaining something that's happened to you, but actually it's what's happened in your book. If you like the story of that and you want to hear more, make sure you read the Billy Goat's Graph or insert whatever your book's called. Uh, that would definitely be a way to do it. I would also think about maybe um, reading excerpts from it. And I would also show some of the pictures that are in it and why you maybe chose to go with the certain designer that uh, created those books. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's just a few ideas off the top of my head. Okay, <clears throat> Lana, I'm conscious um, of the time. Yeah. Today, oh, we, yes. We said we'd be finished up by 11.30 and we're by, well, we're just slightly over time, but it was it was well worth going over the oh. time um, for it. I mean, a huge thank you, the comments and, and the, uh, the chat that's coming in. Everyone seems to really have um, got a lot from today's session and I'm sure there'll be plenty of them <clears throat> watching it again once we share the watch again links um, online. But fear not as well, because our next um, our next upcoming webinar is Content is King, and it's maximizing the results with social media planning. So it's it's taken um, the content and, and the tips that Lynn has given us today and then taken that then around kind of measuring um, your social media impact. So the next webinar is on the 14th of June, if you haven't already signed up for that. Um, and also remember the challenge. We've sent you the challenge. Send in, um, send in your raw videos. Um, send them to us um, through the email that I've put into the comments there. Uh, transform at innovate-ni.com or um, engage, us, engage with us online. Either send a DM or whatever and we'll get back to you. And so we're looking forward actually to seeing um, the, the progress that you've made today. We're actually looking forward to seeing that in practical terms when you send us through the videos. So then that's all for us from today. Thank you so much on behalf of our MAB and Bridge and Craig Avon Council and Innovate MI um, for, for um, being with us today. Um, for some of our Transform Your Business participants who are lucky enough to have Lynn as their mentor, um, mm -hmm. be, um, we've been seeing a lot of stuff on, online from them also. So that's it for today and for today's webinar. Everyone have a lovely Tuesday and we hope to see you again on the 14th of June, same time, same place. Um, see you then. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.